Grace and peace, everybody. This is Pastor Riley again. Um, remember, believe in God's word, making God and his word the final authority. Well, one of the things I want to say, I like the incorruptible, indestructible, the infallible, the ever-living seed word of God. The word of God works, like we said, but we got to work the word of God. And that's what our last, I hope the last session we had segment was was a blessing to you. I know I give a lot of scripture. I don't remember. I'm not giving my opinion. <laughs> I'm giving you the word. You have to read it. Take your life in your hands through reading the word of God. Amen. The quality of your living through reading the word of God. You can trust God in his word. Um, we're going to talk about, we talked about working the word. Now, I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians because I, I wanted to go to the last but I gave you Romans, the um, fourth chapter, that Abraham was fully persuaded, the state of being convinced. He worked the faith. He worked the system of faith. And, and the Bible says, um, so he, he was persuaded that he who that God that promised, he was able. God was able. Come on, you know how you say God is able. God was able. <laughs> to perform, to make what he promised him good. Listen, God is able, and he is willing, and he's already provided it for us to enjoy. He's already, through Christ Jesus, he wants this to be performed in your life, but he needs you to access it. We talked about last time, last week, with faith. Through faith, we access what God's provided what? by grace. That's it. Simple. And don't complicate it. Amen. Now, we're going to go to Thessalonians. First, second Thessalonians, because we're, we're talking about, uh, we talked about working the word, and then we're talking about faith in the word. You know, and I want to share some things with you and hope, hopefully it will stop you from struggling, trying to make it happen yourself like I was doing <laughs> and got so frustrated. Oh, my Lord. You know, you just keep adding more stuff. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should, you know. No, let's, let's, let's establish our faith has to be established. And I say our faith, the faith he gave us has to be totally established off of what he done, what he done, what he provided. Amen? And, and you know, and as time goes on, it's get even clearer to you. And like it's getting clearer to me, you know. Um, I'm getting more and more understanding of this. But I want to go to 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 1.11. It said, Paul is praying, wherefore also we pray always for you. And I want to say this. I am praying for every subscriber. I'm praying for every person. And we already praying for everybody on this planet. But I am also putting that time to pray for every person, the will of God over your life. Because God, you're here, and the Bible says that um, before the world was, that God had predestinated us. To be here. So, and um, we read Ephesians 1 4. So, we're praying that over you that you, that the will of God be fully manifested in your life. And I'm to this include everything that, that, that pertains to you your family, um, financially, health wise, so forth. Everything, the whole salvation package that God provided for us through his son, Jesus Christ, be met, fully manifested in your life. He is perfecting those things that, per, that pertain it, that concerns you. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. I just threw in a prayer. I just, <laughs> but, but, but I want you to know that. And this is one of the prayers, by the way. Uh, he said, I pray always for you that God would count you worthy of his calling and worthy invitation to feast with him <laughs> and fulfill all good pleasure of his goodness 
and the work of faith with power. See that? The work of faith with power. And the rest of this prayer is, he's talking about working your faith, believing it, speaking it, and the power of God shows up to fulfill it. See that? Now watch this. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may glor be glorified in you, in you, and you in him, according to the grace. See, what he's already done, what he's already provided, that the grace uh, of God, of our God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a great prayer. Pray that over yourself every day. Now, what we want to get to is faith in the word. Faith in the word. Now, let's go to Romans. Now, this is what the word is saying. When I say faith in the word, I'm telling you, faith in what the word said about you, right? Faith in what the word said you have. Faith in what the word says you can do. <laughs> See? So that's what we're talking about when we talk about faith in the word. Amen. Now, in the third verse of Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, I say, Paul is speaking, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. That means not being under the influence of anybody else's opinion, but God. Okay, sober, not being under the influence of anybody else's opinion about you, but God. <laughs> and according as God has dealt to every man, now he's talking to the church, the Roman church here, so he's talking to the church. Every man, the measure of faith. So we want to just make sure that you don't think, I hope I got faith. No, you have faith. You're a born again believer, you have faith. And he's gave you the measure, not a measure. Then we have to say, well, he gave this person a measure this much. He gave this person a measure that much. He gave you the measure, the same amount. Remember what we said last week, that we have in the same spirit of faith in um, 2 Corinthians 4.13. Same, same amount. Most approved. Same faith that Jesus had. Remember we talked about in uh, Galatians 2.20 when we said that uh, the life I now live, I live by the faith of, the faith of his faith, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now we read in Second Peter, Peter is talking about we obtain the same, the same, like same like precious faith. <laughs> That's what he said. Through the righteousness of God. The same we obtained. This. Like precious, like precious faith is what he said. Like pre just like him. And this is the same Peter when you read in Acts 5, the very shadow was healing people. And he said we had that same kind of faith. But well, I don't see that in my life, because you think you have a different faith. I think we think we have a different we have the same faith and it's the faith of the son of god can you just say amen on that because that's important that's that's the truth now so we have to dispel well my faith isn't big enough my faith isn't whatever we got to dispel that because that's why a lot i've missed many opportunities that god wanted to manifest in my life through me supernaturally because i thought oh my faith doesn't work it is it's not working on this on wednesday it's not working on monday it worked Sunday, but it won't work Tuesday. Yeah. No, faith, the faith that you have inside you works all the time. That's why we say, he says, the work of faith, 2 Thessalonians 1.11, the work of faith with power, <laughs> with power, it works all the time. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture. This is the bonus one, okay? Because this scripture is going to have you. 1 John, the fifth chapter. This is a bonus scripture. Now, this should settle it. This is going to settle it. Because I don't know how much faith I have. My faith ain't grown enough. And hopefully we can talk about that when we do a whole faith thing 
you know. But right now, I just want to show you we're going to, faith in the word. The word says, I have faith. Say, so the word says, I have faith. Then I have faith. How do you know you have faith? Well, God gave me the measure of faith. You know, the word the is the most approved amount. So, you know, I didn't want to get too much into that, but it's true. It's the most approved. You have faith. And I'm going to show you what kind of faith you have. Look at the fifth chapter. And that way you get your mind off the amount. <laughs> and know what he gave you is more than enough. Amen. Um, the sixth verse, the fourth verse, it says, "What whatsoever is born of God, Overcoming the world. Oh, so whatsoever, same whosoever, if you look in the Greek, same thing, basically. It's born of God, you overcome the world. Well, you're spiritually born again. The Bible says being born again, we talked about that a couple of sessions back, a couple of weeks back. Um, whosoever, um, we said um, that uh, we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. Well, what's, what's part of me born again? Your spirit, right? How do I know? Jesus said, what is John 3, 6? What is born of the Spirit? Flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Amen? So you're born of the Spirit. And the moment you were born of the Spirit, your spirit man came alive to God. His faith went inside of you. Good Lord. And listen what he says. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. This is it. This is it. Pray for me. Look, the overcometh the world, our faith. So you and I have enough faith to overcome anything that's, that's contrary against us in the world. That's how much faith you have. Hallelujah. You have world overcoming faith. You need to shout while I turn to another, <laughs> while I turn to another scripture. Now, well, how did that faith come? Let's go to Romans 10, 17. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And remember, I want to tell you, these are, this is all, as I said in my introduction, maybe about a month ago, almost a month ago, that uh, we are going to be talking about, we're going to be sharing insights, biblical insights of the word. Um, we're going to be sharing um, spiritual truths through kingdom principles. You know, the Bible, we, when we get to the kingdom of God is in you, and you know you got faith right now, oh, you're going to be, woo, the power will be released all over. <laughs> all kinds of things are going to happen because we're in the kingdom of God. The Bible says he delivered us, see, faith in his word. Colossians 1.13, he delivered us out of the power of the control of darkness translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Wow, wow. So we're in the kingdom of his dear son. That's not something in the millennial, in the future. That's right now. <laughs> Amen. The kingdom is within you right now. Now, faith is the dominant law in which the kingdom, the whole, everything in the kingdom of God operates. Faith is the Dominant law in which everything in the kingdom of God operates. Hallelujah. That's why, what well, you know, every attack is against your faith to make you think you don't have enough. You don't work all the time. Your faith is low today because you don't feel right. No, that's a time to use your faith. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. This is so, so important. So your faith is, is not stronger just because you feel stronger. Your faith, it makes you a world overcomer 24-7. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. So how did faith come? Well, we said a couple of, oh, last session we said, what say it did? 10-8, um, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and even in thy heart, the word of faith. In working the word, the word of faith, which we publish with our mouth, or proclaim with our mouth. See? Our hearts, we talked about, is, is, you know, a lot of these, I'm trying to get the word in my spirit. I don't want to get into all that, but let me just say with the word, 
heart is. It's the word cardio. It just simply deals with mental and emotional makeup of man. Mental and emotional makeup because the thing that attacks us the most is our lean not to your own understanding, our reasoning. We, the sense realm is pressing at us and then we start trying to figure stuff out. We need to get our minds up under the word of God. Then emotionally, it will stabilize us emotionally. We don't act out. We don't let, because I don't feel it. You know, the sense realm is real. The sense realm is real. But the spirit realm is more real than the sense realm. Why? Because God, who is a spirit, created this everything in this realm. Can you say amen? Because that is very, very important. I just share. That's a very profound statement. But it's true. Spiritual things are stronger than physical things because God, who is a spirit, created all these things. And remember, as a born-again believer, where is God? In us, in you. Hallelujah. We're in his image. We're in his likeness. And he's given us dominion. Hallelujah. To operate in this realm, to operate the faith he's placed inside of us. Now, in Romans 10, we said, um, um, 10 9 says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Notice, this is salvation because I run in so many Christians. He said, Are you, if Jesus came right now, will you be ready? Oh, no. Are you saved? Oh, I'm trying to be. No. Well, how, do you, how do you know? Well, how do you get saved? Well, I, 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 I turned over a new leaf. I heard one pastor say, God didn't tell us to turn over. He didn't turn over a new leaf. He raked our stinking yards. Um, <laughs> well, that's, he, he, he made us new creatures. How do we get that? We had to confess the Lordship of Jesus. If you don't know you're saved, this is it right here. Romans 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy what? Here's the, here's the faith. Here's the, the system of faith, right? With thy mouth. Who? The Lord Jesus. Believe where? In thy heart. We always have, we don't believe in this, but we do that just so people can understand. But we believe with here, with our mind and it. Uh, we turn over our mind, our reasonings of the mind, and our emotional feelings and says, I believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. This scripture says, Thou shalt be saved. I mean, the wrong scripture says, Thou shalt be saved. See? So now you're saved. You're born again. The moment you confess Jesus Lordship, he is Lord, you know, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. It don't matter what thrown at you, what other concepts you hear, according to I believe God's word. <laughs> Remember, making God in the word the final authority. For as God is concerned, you are saved. You are alive to him. He's your father. Now, we're going to keep going down. And it says, the moment you accept him as Lord, faith went inside of you. But faith came to you to confess his lordship. And this is how it came to you. The scripture says, 17 verse. Well, let's go to the 16 verse. Um, yep, 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 yep. Okay, good. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, who have believed our report? And then he says, so then faith cometh. How did faith come? By hearing. By hearing what? The word of God. Faith in the word. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the moment we the gospel was preached to you. You sat and heard the gospel. Faith came to you. And when you receive Jesus by saying, Jesus is Lord. And I know sometimes we do things like, excuse me. Well, I want to tell the Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Well, he took all your sins. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Well, you've been forgiven 2,000 years ago. I mean, you're not 2,001 years old. I mean, but I'm saying it happened before you got here. But the thing is that, but, but what's so beautiful about that, that 
The moment you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, you accept total forgiveness. Isn't that wonderful? Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I am forgiven. Hallelujah. So, the only confession is left is to confess his lordship. Jesus, I confess you as Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. From this day forward, I'm saved. And we're going to talk about saved, not from traditional um, uh, definitions. We're going to talk about saved from the definition of the kingdom of God, what it means. Because now you birthed into the kingdom of God. Amen. God's your father, Jesus, your Lord, the Holy Spirit, quicken you, made you alive, where he can be your teacher and your comforter. There's so many wonderful things that is allotted to us when we uh, come into the kingdom of God and then live, learn how to live by the word of God. Amen. Now, I want to get back to this. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So faith came, and guess what it did? When you accept Jesus Christ, faith did not only come, but it stayed. <laughs> so remember, the just can now live just as righteous. You've been made righteous. You can now live by faith. Amen. So I want to say this. Don't forget, we're going to have to close up, but don't forget to, um, you know, subscribe to this YouTube channel and share it with others. And I want you to remember, Jesus is King of kings, Lord of lords, blessings on you.